Shalom. My name is um, Brother Jacob. I was known as the Iqua from One Nation, One Power. I'm here with my brother Kadash. You know, we're coming to do this lesson today. You know, to bring some uh, some clarities, right? To bring out the truth because there's a lot of brothers out there, you know, from the tribe of Israel, also from the tribe of Judah, you know, are claiming that uh, the Native Americans, the the Mexican are not from the tribe of Israel because, you know, we look different. You know, we have a different appearance. But, you know, we, we're, we're bringing out some evidence, you know, we're bringing out some, some, some scriptures that will be able to validate, you know, that what they're bringing out is garbage, is a bunch of foolishness. You know, if they are in the spirit of the Most High, they should bring something forth that will actually, you know, exalt a brother and a sister and lift them up instead of put them down. So we're going to bring out this information, you know, and we're going to make a comparison, you know, because the, the theory that they use about the Native Americans being Mongols or Mongoloids or however they want to say it, you know, comes from one person, you know, and it was a theory that this guy, you know, made as a thesis for his college to graduate. OK, now and now we're going to go out and bring out information about him. And I want you, who are actually, uh, who actually are from the tribe of, 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 of Gad, or the the Northern Kingdom, which will be the the children of uh, what, the, the Northern tribe, which is uh, Native Americans, the the Mexicans, the, all the Latino tribes that were here. You know, I know that the Scripture says, you know, even in, in Josephus, and even in other books, say not all the tribes came here, but majority of the tribes did come here. Okay. Now, this, this has been a great debate between, you know, even historians and um, archaeologists, you know. There, there's a great debate between them, like, how did these people come here and who are they, you know. And I'm going to bring out a book right here. It's called Mystery, right, Mystery of the Americas, okay. And even in this book, I'm going to read this real quick and we're going to get some more information. But uh, even in this book, it explains... That their different theory in. Oh, no, wait a Let me say something. All right, right here. This is a uh, page seventy-seven. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and see that right, right there. Okay. It says, in archaeology, the dark continent is America. It's talking about this place. To the, to the people that deal in science and archaeology claims that America continues to be a, a dark place, meaning there's, there's, that there's no um, real information, okay, that validates who we are, where we came from. You know, they have a lot of theory, okay? Now, these brothers that are bringing this information about us being mongoloids, they are actually, you know, lifting up this theory, Okay, this theory, which, um, what's his name? Johan Frederick Blumenbach. There you go. You see that? Johan. Uh, right there. Johan uh, Frederick Blumenbach. Okay, that's him right there. He's a German or Jewish, okay, Jewish man, all right? He's the one that came up with five different races according to his anthropology, okay, to, through his study of the human skull, all right? We're going to bring this out too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this scripture real quick. My brother's going to bring forth information from that... Uh, that, 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 piece, that uh, paperwork right there. Now I'm going to read out of Psalms chapter 1, 119, 89. Okay, if you have an ears to hear, you know, I pray that you hear. You know, if you have eyes to see, I pray that your eyes see. Because, because, go for it, brother. Because right now we, we are in a place, you know, in the end times, man, where we're supposed to be lifting up our brothers, where we're supposed to be lifting up our sisters, you know. But we, we got people like, like, you know, these groups that are coming out saying that we're not Israelite, you know? Well, 
you know, they can say if they want to, you know. I mean, it, it doesn't affect me because my spirit is so far in this truth that I can't turn back. There's no turning back for me. You know, the Most High had, you know, saved me from a life of destruction, you know. So what kind of a person would I be? What man of a person can would I be if, you know, whatever the Most High had pulled me out of, whatever situation the Most High had pulled me out of and restored me and brought me back to my rightful mind, you know, what kind of a person would I be if I just threw all that away? Now, for you um, Northern Tribes, I want you to think about that, you know, and have that kind of thought. What kind of a person will be when we come into this truth and, and accept the Most High and accept His laws, His statutes, and His commandments, and all of a sudden throw it away because you hear some ignorant fool on the internet saying that you're a mongoloid, you know? All they're doing is just photo ops, you know? That's how you that's how you teach kids, you know? Like, look, 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 book, yellow, yellow book, you know? That's all they're doing. They're just comparing us to a picture. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring this out of the scripture, man. This is um, Psalms chapter 119 and verse 89. Now check this out. And it reads, For even, for, excuse me, forever, O Lord. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. It says forever. And? O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy word is what? Is settled in heaven. Thy word is settled in heaven. So the scriptures that we're going to pull out is already settled in heaven. So no matter what you say out there, no matter it, no matter what you call me, you call me a mongoloid. Now that's my first question, you know. Okay, the Bible said that his word is settled forever in heaven, right? Now pull me one verse out of this scripture that say that we are mongoloids. Pull me out Dang. one verse that describes any nationality on this planet, on the most highest planet, that there are mongoloids. You won't find that verse. So what these people are bringing out is garbage, okay? It's foolishness. Yeah, they might have some, they might have a good way of bringing things out or whatever, but you know what? It's garbage. The most high said that his word is settled forever in heaven. So we're gonna bring out some scriptures, we're gonna bring out some information, and like the most high said, it's settled in heaven. All right, do you want to do you want to debate God? Can you go up to heaven and and change what is written in heaven? Can you do that? Nah, I can't do that. So I'm going to do what the word says, man. Go for it, bro. You know, and I want to make this point, you know. When you go to Isaiah chapter 11 and read verse uh 13. Me personally, I know this has to happen because it's living prophecy. Go ahead and read that, brother. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversary of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So, right there, we know this has to happen. The scripture just pointed out right, right then and there. This happened in all times. This is how the split came about. And it's happening again. Okay, what is that scripture? Like, there ain't nothing new, nothing new underneath the sun? That's right. In Ecclesiastes. Okay, we know that this has to happen. But, you know, we're going to point things out. We have to point things out. We have to be leaders. We have to stand up. Too, and you know to prove ourselves you know the most high didn't wake us up for no reason that's right okay so you know this all this has to happen it has to come to pass okay but are you going to uh are you going to eventually uh condemn your own self by your actions and by what you say to other people on the internet or on facebook See, that's something that you have to think about because your words, every word shall be judged. Every that's word. That's right. No matter if you type it, text it, everything, what you say, what you have in your heart is going to be judged. You see? And I, I, I'm, we're spiritual, we're spiritual people now. We know the Bible. We know, uh, spirits. We, we get attacked. We feel it. And 
by us knowing that we know when a hate spirit is attacking us. Okay, we we're not we're not little kids in this game no more. Okay, but we know that this has to come to pass. So we want to bring out the information. Go ahead, brother. All right, man. Just like you say, you know, this scripture has to come to pass. Isaiah 11 and 8. You know, so it happened in time past and it's happening today. You know, Christ forewarned us about this same kind of spirit. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and go to, um, what's that? Matthew um, 4, 24 and 24. Yes, I'll get it right now. All right. This Christ warned us about this spirit. Because just like how he said, you know, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, right? And Judah shall not vex Ephraim, right? So the same spirit between the two tribes, you know, is actually going into work today because this is how the Most High is going to separate the tares and the wheat. All right? The rebels from the righteous. Go ahead, read that scripture, brother. This is Matthew 24 and verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. What kind? False Christ. False Christ. And false prophets. And what? And false prophets. False prophets and? And shall show great signs. And what? And great signs. Great signs. That means your YouTube channel, man. That means your your picture, your photo op saying that we are mongoloids, great signs. That might be great for you because some people will clap at that and say, yeah, okay, I can see. I can see the resemblance. But guess what? Go ahead. Keep reading, man. And wonders. And what? And wonders. Go ahead. And so much that. That what? If it were possible. That if it were possible, what was that? What would be possible, man? Go ahead. They shall deceive the very elect. They shall deceive the very elect. That's talking about you, Israel. You northern kingdom. You're the very elect that these false prophets, these false Christ, these false teachers, these false wonders, signs and wonders that they do on YouTube is going to try to deceive you. This is that same vexation, that same envy that Isaiah had prophesied about. That will happen. And guess what? It's happening again. There's nothing new underneath the sun. Okay? So when, we're gonna, when we read that scripture and know that, and know that these brothers, all they're doing is, is showing you a photo ops. Saying that we look Asian. We look Mongoloid. Looking at our, our features and saying, oh, they look different. You know, they look, they can't be Negroes. They don't got the, the wooly hair. They don't got facial hair. See, well, come on now, man. Now, they're, they're, yeah. they're doing exactly what this guy did. Read, read, read that real quick. What you said, what, what, you know, and the I think it was the second page, where it talks about yeah, right there. Okay, this is uh, his uh, beliefs on races. Okay, now these same brothers, okay, that are calling us mongoloids, you know, I think they're like, you know, best buddies or pen pals with Johan Freem. What's that, Johan Blumenbach? Mm -hmm. You know, because they share the same idea, man. They share, they, they, they share the same spirit. Go ahead, read that, brother. It says, he divided the human species into five races. Five races. Okay. What did, what did we just first read in uh, Psalms chapter 119, 89? All right. It says that his word is set up forever in heaven. Now, you can find the races and the nations of the people in Genesis. Why do they have to go to a, a Jewish man, you know, who studies the human spirit? Say they studied the human skull and created a theory, you know, for his thesis so that he can graduate. Why are they referring to this fool, you know? Why are they referring to that fool but not referring to the scriptures? The scripture has nothing to say about no mongoloids. Or doesn't it tell us to go and examine a person and say, oh, what? He's a mongoloid. Or, oh, look, 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 he, he, he's an African. Or, look, 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 he, he's, he's an, it's an Asian. You know, that's foolishness. Go ahead, read that, man. Let me read it again. He divided the human species into five races in that's 1779. Right. Later founded on cranium research, descriptions of human skulls, and called them. Okay, here's the first race. The Caucasian or white race. Okay. That's one. The Mongoloids or yellow race, including all East Asians and some Central Asians. Now listen to that. He classified the Mongoloids, okay? 
as being one of being one of a race, right? And he explained that there were the Asians, the 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 what? Uh, the Eastern Asian and the, the and the Central Asian. and the Central the Central Asian. Okay, now go ahead, keep reading further, man. Okay, uh, the Mel Melanoid or Brown race, including uh, Southern East Asians and Pacific Islanders. Now, that don't make no sense. This guy's examining these skulls, and he's saying that all the Asian people are different people, <laughs> different races, and he's calling them Asians. And you fools going to take that information and, and say that it's sound doctrine and call us Mongoloids and call us Asians? Go ahead. Keep reading that, bro. The, the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians. Okay. They don't even classify the African uh, native... Okay, I mean, the American, go, 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 go ahead. The Ethiopians or black race, including okay. Sub-Saharan Africans. Sub-Saharan Africans. He didn't even mention the Ivory Coast. He didn't even mention the American. Uh, what's that? Uh, what, what the the colors, the blacks, you know, the American Negroes, or however you want to call it. He didn't even mention them. He didn't even mention the Arabs, you know. The people that are in Iran in that area, he didn't even mention them. Aren't they a race? Aren't they a race of people? Now come on, you're gonna you're gonna take this guy's information and push it forth as sound doctrine. Let me read more. It says then now the last one is the American or red race, including American Indians. Wow, look at that. It's it, he five races and three races, okay? That you that um you brothers try to say that we're mongoloids, you know we're supposed to fall in the Asian race, we're supposed to fall in the, the the mongoloid race, but yet he classified us as a different race. So what kind of fools are you, man? What kind of fools are you trying to bring forth this truth? Let me, let me, let me read this right here. Go for it, man. It says Blooming Bot claim that Adam and Eve were Caucasians. <laughs> Woo! Go ahead, man. Inhabitants of Asia. Oh, what? See. See it, Asians hy hypothesis and other races came about uh, by de degeneration from environmental factors such as the sun and poor diet. <laughs> Thus he claimed Negroids pigmentation arose because of the result of the heat of the tropical sun. White and cold wind caused the color of the Eskimos. <laughs> man, so you so you see what this guy's bringing forth, man. He's saying that Adam and Eve were white people, man. You know, and saying that they dwell in Asia. So why are you brothers, you know, trying to bring forth this false doctrine about the Mongols and the Asian and trying to put us in there? You know, might might as well join us, man, because Adam and Eve are Asians. They were born in Asia. No? Come on now. That don't make no sense. Let's get some scriptures for this real quick. Let's get some scriptures for this particular... Um, uh, <laughs> garbage. Okay? That's, that's right, man. Let's go to uh, Job 9 and 24. Oh, yeah. There you go. See, man, we're going to we're gonna bring forth some, some information, man. And like I said, in the very beginning, you know, Psalms chapter 119... Verse 89, it's forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So we're going to bring out the word, and guess what? It's already been settled. There's no debate. There's no, there, that, that's the final conclusion there. You know, so I'm going to read this, bro. Okay. Go 9 and 24, and then get Psalms 58 and 3. We can do two things at once. Okay, we got Job chapter 9 and verse 24. It says, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. That's right. There you go. Of the who? Of the wicked. Of the wicked. Of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? What was the other verse, man? Psalms 58 and 3. Okay, yeah. There we go. Now, now when we first came into this truth... A lot of the brothers were quoting this scripture, okay? But I want you to take a close look and examine what this scripture is actually saying, okay? This is Psalms 1, 
Psalms 83 and verse 3. No, Psalms 58 and 3. Oh, 58 and 3. I'm sorry. But yeah, we're going to get to that, that verse, right? Uh, where is it? 50. Okay, this is Psalms chapter 58 and verse 3. The wicked are exchanged, are exchanged from the womb. Ex exchanged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Speaking what? Speaking lies. There you go. Speaking lies. This man is a Jewish man. A Jewish liar. A Jewish liar. You know, just like what Christ said, man. I mean, he, and this is his buddy. And that's his buddy right there. Christoph Miners, man. That's his other buddy. So if, if, if you're out there speaking his lie, you know, I guess that's your father, man. Because what did Christ say? So you are your father, the devil. You know, that the truth does not reside in him. You know, he was a liar from the beginning. So you are a liar too. From the womb, from, from the very womb. Now, I'm going to grab that verse, though. Psalms 83 and verse 3. Okay. 83? Yeah. Psalms 83 and 3. 83 and 3. Let me get that. And the reason why we're going to bring out this verse is because I want you to pay attention to what this this verse is actually... Um, what, what, what is it? Who is it actually referring to? Okay. okay? Now, yes, it refers to all Israel, you know, Okay, but we're going to bring this in another direction, okay? Now, check this out. Go ahead. This is Psalms 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. That's right. And consulted against thy hidden ones. That's right. Now, what did he, what did he say? Crafty counsel against thy who? Thy hidden ones. Okay, now tell me who was hidden. Was it the northern kingdom or was it the southern kingdom? Who was hidden from the people or the continent of Africa and Europe. Okay? Now when you now you remember when the tribes split, okay? The, the northern kingdom went into captivity underneath the Assyrian captivity. Okay, so that's when they came that's when they got taken out of the land in um what's that second Kings 17 because they didn't want to obey the Lord the God don't want to obey the Lord God so the Lord kicked them out. Okay? Now, when you read in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse, what's that, verse 8? Verse now, eight. check this out. Okay, because there's a reason why we're going to bring this out. And, and I'm going to show you something out of this book. A lot, of, a lot of our brothers are familiar with this book, okay? But we're going to put this piece together, and we're going to show it. And it's going to bring a new light and a new understanding to, to what this scripture is referring to. Because I'm not here trying to debunk that the, the, the African Americans here... You know, I'm not trying to debunk them saying that they're not the Jews we, because we believe that. You we, know, we believe that you are our brothers. That's right, but we also believe that we are in the scriptures, and this scriptures, there's 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 pieces of these scriptures that refer to us, you know, directly. Okay, now go ahead and read that, man. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter three and verse eight. That's right. And I saw, uh, when when for all the causes whereby. Backsliding Israel committed Back, adultery. Backsliding who? Backsliding Israel committed adultery. Okay. I had put her away. Put her gave, away. And gave her a bill of divorce. That's right. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not. Okay, stop right there. Now, he, he the, the Mosai, through the prophet Jeremiah, say he divorced Israel. Okay? And then he's making a, another... An, he, he's... um. Bringing another statement into it, saying, and his treacherous, uh, the treacherous, what's that, sister Judah, okay, because we're split into two, you know, in the time of Solomon. So we're, so we're side by side, but he said he gave Israel a bill of divorce, right? And go ahead, keep reading that, man. Okay, uh, but went and played the whore also. That's right. Verse 9. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land. Okay. And committed adultery with stones and That's with right. stocks. That's right. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah had not turned unto me. There you go. There again. He described Israel and he describes Judah. Okay. 
Israel fell first. We all know that. We got to build divorce, but Judah did not repent. After seeing us, seeing what the Most High had did to the children of Israel by taking us out of the land and putting us into the Assyrian captivity and dispersed us and kicked us out of the land. What you read in 2 Kings 17. Go ahead, keep reading that, man. Read verse 10. And yet, for all this, her treacherous sister, Judah, had not turned unto me with her whole heart. That's right. But flakely said the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than her treacherous Judah. There you go. See, we didn't want, at that time, we didn't want to repent. We didn't want to turn back to the Most High. We, just like what the Christian says, the Lord knows my heart, you know? So go ahead and get out 2 Kings, what's that, um, 17, 20, wait, yeah, 2 Kings 17, verse 18 and 20. Now, we're, we're still going to go back to Psalms 83 and 3, okay? 2 Kings 18? No, uh, 17. 17. And what verse? Um, 18. 18. Yeah. All right, it's the 2 Kings, chapter 17 and verse 18. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel. That's right. And removed them out of his sight. Moved them out of sight, out of the sight of Jerusalem. Go ahead. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. There you go. Back to what Jeremiah said. You know, the Most High gave the builders of voice to Israel, but still kept Judah in the land. They still had a position. You know, they're still serving the Most High after the split. Okay, but yet Judah was still doing evil too. They didn't want to repent after seeing us being moved out of the land, being moved out of the sight of the Most High. Okay, go ahead. Continue to read that, man. Uh, you got 18. Go read 20. Verse 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. What? And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Rejected all the seed of Israel. Okay, Judah was still there, but yet we were rejected. Okay, now after getting that, so what we're, we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and bring this out. Okay, because the reason why we're talking about the hidden ones is because when you read this book from Babylon to Timbuktu, you know, right here in um, page 90. Now check this out. Okay. And after reading this, we're going to refer to this, this verse. We're going to get that? Deuteronomy 28? Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to refer to this verse, Deuteronomy 28, because these same people, these same Israelites, you know, that saying that we're not the tribe of Israel, you know, say that we don't fit the curses. Okay. I just now pulled out a scripture in Psalms 83 saying that we are the hidden ones. Okay. And I'm going to still show you that we are the hidden ones because this, this, this um, scripture is going to explain why we are the hidden ones. And Deuteronomy 28, the, the verse that we're going to get to, explains, you know, the difference between Israel and Judah, okay? Because I'm going to read this book right here in page 90 and check what it says. It says, the black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. They they assured them a constant precedence for the development of a higher social social organization. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip over here to uh, I'm going to skip a sentence and it's going to say, in fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. Okay, the Jews made use of every opportunity. They were as industrial and skillful people, and it talked about them being. It talked about the Jews being the princes, the governors, generals. Secretaries, kings, treasurers, doctors, engineers, painters, etc., etc. Okay, now they're in the land of Africa, right? Okay, this is after they flee from the Roman persecution, which happened in, in 70 AD. Okay, this book just clarified that they carry their, you know, their 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 tradition, their history, and their laws. It was all written records. They carried it with them. So the people of Africa, you know, they knew who the Jews were because that's part of the doctrines of how they know that they sold the Hebrews into slavery because the Africans knew who the Jews, who they are because they sold the Hebrew people into slavery. Okay, so that means 
that the Jews and the Africans must have understood each other if they, they were a, the kings. Go ahead. They had a relationship. They had a relationship. They knew each other. They knew each other. They were they lived side by side because they were their kings. They were their generals. They were their doctors. They were their engineers. Okay. They developed different different civilizations in Africa, so the Africans knew who the Hebrews are. They knew who they were. Okay, so the Hebrews understood them, and the Africans understood the Hebrews. That's why the Europeans came and got the Africans to help them. That exactly. So even 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 what my brother has said, the Jews on the Ivory Coast knew about the Europeans because they flee from the Roman persecution. They knew about the Grecian captivity, okay? But Israel had already came to a place, to a land where no man has ever dwelt. So they didn't know about the Grecian, Alexander. They didn't know about the Rome, you know, Titus, you know, Vespasian, you know, any of those people. They didn't know of them. And they didn't know the Africans either, okay? And they weren't, they weren't socializing. They weren't. You know, there was no communication between them and Israel, which were on this side of the continent. Okay, so I'm making that point to say this. Okay, when we read this verse, keep that in mind. Okay, because who are the hidden ones? That's the question. Who are the hidden ones and who is this verse or this curse is referring to? Okay, you got something to say, brother? No, go ahead. No. Go ahead, get that verse, man. Okay, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. One more time, what? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 49. Deuteronomy 28, 49. Get your Bible and let's look at this verse and see what curse or what curse, okay, this is prescribing to the southern kingdom or the northern kingdom. Okay, the children of Israel, you know, who are the Native Americans, the Mexicans, the Latino tribes, you know, that are on this side of the, the continent. Okay, and remember. There's seven continents. You know, America is it's a continent. Africa, Europe, they're two different they're continents. They're right above each other, okay? Now go ahead and read it. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. That's right. The Lord shall bring a nation. Okay, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Against thee from far. From the end of the earth. Now, there you go. From the end of the earth. Now, is is Europe and Africa connected? Are they connected? I don't know. I'm not too sure. Are they connected? Can can we look at the map and say, you know what? Europe and Africa, you know, that's that's far. That's the end of the earth. That's far. You know, that what did he say? Read again. The, the Lord shall bring a what? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From far? From? From the end of the earth. Is that the end of the earth from Africa to Europe? Because the two continents are connected. Well, maybe for, for you Hebrews, it is. Go ahead, keep reading that, man. I hope so. Let me read that again. <laughs> the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From the end of the earth. That's right. As swift as an eagle fleeth. Right. Yep. A nation whose tongue... Thou shalt not understand. Now listen to that. We just now told you that the Hebrews, or, you know, this guy just now told you that the Hebrews had an advantage over the African tribes. They absorbed some of the African tribes. They were the kings of African tribes. They were the governors, the lieutenants, the governors, or doctors, or whatever, okay, over the African tribes. So they have to be mingling. So how can they be a tongue that they don't understand? You know? Go ahead, bro. And you got to think about this. You know, the native tribes that went to the Americas, okay, they were there for generations. That's right. From what? What's that? 700 and... 721. 721 to 1492 BC or AD. Okay. So you got to take that into consideration and really look at it for what it is. Okay? Children born generation after generation after generation. They're not going to they're not going to know this type of language. They're not going to all they're going to know is this civilization that they have. That's right. The ego, man. 
Just like what my brother said. That's that's facts. Okay? Through the generation, see, I can speak my language, you know? I understand my language. I mean, I, mean, I don't understand the Hebrew, the Phoenician Hebrew, and, and yet Native American language is part of the Paleo Hebrew, okay? An older version, you know? Uh, well, we, I, I, I want to say it's like a purer version because it has not been tainted by the Europeans or any other ethnicity outside of this country until 1492 so we didn't have that luxury of 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 uh, like what well, how, how can you say that man you know we 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 didn't like the scripture said you know a tongue a nation of a tongue that you don't understand so we didn't have that ability to to communicate with christopher columbus or any of the africans that's why columbus had to bring forth hebrew translators to translate to a ling a linguistics to trade to talk with the Native Americans. Hold on, Go think, ahead, think about that too. Why you got to ask yourself this question? Why did Christopher Columbus bring translators? That's right. That knew Hebrew. That's right. Why did he do that? I'm, ho I'm hoping that we're knocking scales off your eyes. <laughs> Come on, boy, yeah. out of here. No, no, that that scripture right there. I mean, it best fits the Most High's hidden one because Columbus didn't. Well, I'm going to say majority of the world before they read the Apocrypha, okay, before they start reading the scriptures and start trying to understand the scriptures, didn't know about the children of Israel being on this side of the world. They only knew about Judah, okay, and and the Southern Kingdom, of course. And I'm, I'm going to admit this. Not all the 12 tribes, you know, not all the 10 tribes came here all together. Yes, but majority of the 10 tribes came here. There were still some of our of our brothers and sisters still with Judah that didn't, that that repented, that still stayed in, in Jerusalem with Judah, with Benjamin, with mm -hmm. Levi. Yeah, yeah I, I got no, I got, I have, I have no, no wrong in saying that. I believe that. Yes, yeah, in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures, just like what the word says when we first read it out in Psalms 1, 119, 89. Oh, Lord, forever the word said on heaven. I can't change that. I got to accept it. All right. So can you accept it? You know, so that, that verse right there explains us to the T because we're a nation because we're, you know, from the ends of the earth. OK. And we're a, a people that didn't understand Christopher Columbus. OK. And it says a nation, a tongue that you don't understand. So it's talking about a different nationality because we understood Hebrew. Okay. Now, what, what else we want to get, man? Let's bring out the uh, the whole bearing straight. Oh, yeah. Well, we can't forget about that because this is what we read in the beginning with uh, Johann uh, Blumenbach. And out of this book right here, the same book, Mysteries of the Americas. Now, their theory about us coming across the Bering Strait or the land bridge, you know, you could say, uh, what, what is that, man? They could say that was a theory that every historian and archaeologist, archaeological, I mean, archaeological, yeah, that that was their only, you know, way of saying that we came here, because they believe that we didn't have no sophisticated machinery or invention, or we we weren't highly intelligent to develop anything to get to to bring us to this continent okay they they believe that we had to walk here okay now let me show you this now this is about the Bering Strait okay shows you a map right there okay now in between that is a thousand miles and there's two theories there's the land bridge okay well these these two theories go hand in hand okay there's there's a land bridge and then they had to make the way through the corridor. Okay. Now, in order for that to work, it had to be coal to create ice for the land bridge. Okay. But it had to be warm for the people to pass through the corridor to make it to South America. Remember, a thousand miles. Now, you're, you're telling me that, that we came here following a herd of mammoth or whatever, you know, and we, we came across a thousand miles hunting them. Right? And, and we had to bring women with us because how else would we develop? You know? 
And it just wasn't just one woman, you know? We had to bring like a whole tribe at that time. Because when you read further further on, this guy here says that the let me see. Well, let me get it, man. It says this. In any case, once the America's the America side, wait, in any case, once on the America side, okay, saying so once he got to America, it says the immigrants which were said that had made their way along the eastern slope of the Rockies, that there was no point of return. Because they had to make it through the corridor when it was warm. So the so once they got here and when it got cold, they couldn't make it back. Explain what a corridor is. For some okay, a corridor is, well, if you're walking through your, I'm, I'm going to give you an example of your hallway. Walking through the hallway is like walking through a corridor, okay? Now, that's the only way that you can get through, you know, into South America because everything was covered in ice. Everything was in, in the glacier form. So in order to walk through the corridor, it had to be warm and it had to be open, okay? But the thing is, what doesn't make sense, and even they themselves said it themselves, that when it was warm, the ice melted and it was flooded. So there was no way that we could get through that. And the only way to get through that, if it was cold. But when it got cold and if the water's flooded and when it got cold, guess what? The water's solid. You can't pass through a corridor because a corridor don't exist. And they say it here too. Let me read it. It says, according to one's timetable, favored by Arrivus, early people traveled this corridor during a warm part of the last ice age known as the two creek intervals. Okay, now I'm going to go full, skip a, a sentence. And it says, uh, it wasn't always easy. Now check this out. It wasn't always easy to make the land bridge and corridor timetable worked it wasn't easy to make that theory to work okay now this explains why the land bridge depended on coal when the climate was warm it was flooded okay so when in order for us to get through the land the land bridge it had to be cold but when it was warm the corridor was flooded so there you go it's not balancing out okay and uh and the corridor depended on warmth but when the climate was cold, the two super glaciers close close aside the corridor, if it even existed. See, even themselves, they said they don't even know if it existed or not. Let me say something, brother. Go for them. Okay, we got to think about this. Everything, if we did pass through this climate, everything had to be perfect. That's right. The right temperature. The right path, everything had to be perfect because in that type of temperature, we could have our lungs, our lungs could have collapsed. Even even archaeologists when they go down there, they have to wear special suits in to Arctic keep gear. In, in Arctic gear exactly. So we had to think. We got to think about all the elements, you know, and. For us to survive that type of environment and having those perfect weather conditions, that's a theory. That's a uh, that's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Real, right? You know, so you know, put put your thinking cap on. Put it on. You know, I grew up around Judah all my life. I have more Judah, Judah homeboys than than uh, Mexican and uh, Native Americans. Why is that? They're my brothers. <laughs> Simple as that. You know? Come on, man. We really got to think about all this. That's right. Go ahead, brother. And you know what? You know, we, we brought that out just to say that the land bridge don't work, man. No matter how you try to, you know, try to clarify it or say that it's uh you know good reference it just don't work you know just like how he said i mean my my brother made a comparison even with the the trail of tears you know which the talk talk chalk does on walk the cross you know only like what be like 500 miles and this is a thousand miles and majority of the people died on the, on the trail of tears you know it was a, it was a cold climate at that time too because it was in the winter time 
But this is talking about an ice age. I mean, and believe this, even when animals migrate, they don't migrate in the dead cold of winter. They migrate when before it even gets cold. So if we were following animals that were migrating, why did, I mean, animals know better than, you know, to, to travel when it's before it gets cold, okay? They know better than that. You know, they know better than not to travel when it's cold. But before it gets cold, go for it, man. You know, and uh, another point, too, and according to this theory, all the indigenous people went through this Bering Strait. Okay, so you got to think about uh, people in Brazil. You got to think about all these different uh, indigenous people, not just the Native American Indians. You know, so, um, you know, and, and, and we come to the land and classify ourselves as different people. You know, because we are, <laughs> you know, we brothers, but we different people, you know, so you got to put put that into consideration, too. That's right. And you know what? I Like I said, when we brought when we brought out that verse, we're also going to bring on some other verses because, you know, what, what these brothers are trying to do, they're trying to make a separation, you know, they, they're trying to use, you know, what they can see. Now, if they were spiritual brothers, they'll use their spirit, you know, but they just want to use what whatever false doctrine they have because that is false doctrine now we're gonna go ahead and get get this out of uh we we'll get out of daniel's we get that daniel yeah like daniel. okay this is daniel's chapter nine and and when you think about the scripture man because how many captivities have israel and judah been in we already talked about judah being down in africa and you know absorbing some of the african tribes Okay, then we also know about Paul being in Rome speaking, you know, Greek, you know, and he was able to do that, you know. So they had people, I mean, they had family throughout every captivity. So you think every child's gonna look the same, you know? Even the, the, the Romans looked at Paul and thought he was an African, you know. And then, and, and, and uh, we know that Israel dwelled amongst the Canaanites. When you read Judges and um, Joshua, that's right. We know that, and we know that even with the with the Book of Ruth, that they were in, in the land of Moab. You know, jo, uh, Jonah being in up there in, in the Syrian um, Providence. Go ahead, and, uh, got that, got that, bro. Yeah. Um, all right. This is Daniel chapter nine and verse seven, right? Yeah. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto me, thee. That's right. But unto us, confusion of faces. Confusion of faces, man. Now check that out. Now that's why these brothers are not even, they don't even, did they even read the scriptures or even understand what confusion of faces mean? You know? Because they look at me and they're confused. Is he an Israelite? He looks like a, he looks like a, a Moabite. He, he looks like a, you know, what, an Asian. He looks like he's Chinese, you know? This, this is what they're doing. They're doing exactly what he's doing. Exactly. And if you judge all the outer appearance, you'll only get five races. <laughs> okay? This is what he did. And you get that Adam and Eve are white. All right? Go ahead, man. Keep reading that, man. Okay. As at this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel. And to all whom? Israel. Even to you too, Judah, and to us, Israel, guess what? Confusion of face. Go ahead, read that, man. That are near. That are near. That means Jerusalem or even Africa, the Ivory Coast. That's that's real near. That's real close to Jerusalem. Okay, I wonder how far America is or the land of Azareth. You know, how far is that from Jerusalem? Keep reading. And that are far off. That are what? And that are far off. That are far off. So that means us. You know, because Jerusalem and Africa, they're not that far, man. You can walk. All right. But uh, if you want to go somewhere far, you know, take a plane or take a boat. Guess what? Israelites took a boat. That's right. Go ahead. Through all the countries, whether thou has driven them. That's right. Because their trespasses. That's right. That they have trespassed against thee. Mm -hmm. O Lord, to us belongeth conf confusion of faces. That's right. To our kings. 
To our what? To our kings. See, that's why you can't look at us because what, what does Christ say? He's coming back to build a nation, right? Of kings and priests. You're looking at some kings right here, man. So to your to, to what? To our kings? Belonging to what? Confusion of faith. So you can't look at us and recognize as us being kings in the nation of Israel. But we are. We are kings. We are chiefs. We are generals. We are soldiers. That's right. Go for it, man. You got no, that was it, right? Uh let, let's go ahead and get to uh what's that uh 2 Corinthians 10 and 10 and 7. And that's the thing, man. All they want to do is photo ops. They want to look at you and say, oh, you're not an Israelite. Uh, you're, you're a mongoloid. You know, let, let me explain something scientifically. Or, <laughs> okay, you got genotypes and phenotypes. That's right. Okay, these are two different genes. All right? Phenotype is uh, from your mother, and the genotype is from your father. Okay, but what if one gene, when, if one gene is stronger than the other, you know... You can even look at your own family members. You can see if uh, your outer appearance comes from your mom or your dad. You can, you can see what gene was stronger. And that's off the outer appearance. Okay? So if you judge off the outer appearance, that's what you're going to run into. You're going to run into confusion. Because two genes are battling each other. Okay? And this is what he did. Okay? J judging by skulls. <laughs> That's right, man. All right, what, what was it? Is that Second Corinthians? Oh yes, ten and seven. Second Corinthians ten and seven. You know that this is exactly why one of the gifts of the Spirit is discernment of spirits. That's right. I mean, Christ just didn't look at everybody and say, oh, you're, you're an Israelite, you know, or, you know, you're a, a Phoenician or you're a Mongoloid. Yeah. And again, once again, Mongoloid is not in the Bible. Have you found it yet? You know, if you haven't found it yet, so throw it out, man. You know, go for it, man. Okay, verse 7. Yeah. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 7. All right. Do ye look on things after the outer appearance? Now this question is to you. Do you look on things on what? The outer appearance. The outer appearance. Why? If any man trust yeah. to himself that he be that he that he is Christ. Okay. If you if you think you are anointed, if you're the children of Israel and you're anointed, and if you're looking at the outer appearance, then what? Let him of himself. You of yourself do what? Think this again. Think again. Think again. Take a second thought and say, okay, I'm, I'm the child of Israel, man. You know, but am I going to look at the outer appearance of a man, you know, or a woman and say he's an Israelite or not? If I do that, I got to think myself again. Because guess what? We read in Daniels that there, to us belongs the confusion of face. Okay, we just read in Psalms 83 how he had how the nations had um, came together, had counseled together against thy hidden ones. Okay, go ahead and read that, man. Let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, that he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Even so, we are anointed. We are in Christ. All right, now I'm going to bring out another scriptures in Romans. Okay, this is Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 4. Okay, it says, was it Romans 8 and 4? Yeah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. After the what? But after the spirit. Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. See, that's where, if you judge it, judge according to the Spirit. That's the sermon of spirits. Okay, you can you can judge a person if he's carrying a devil. That's right. How can you, you can't, and you can't judge a person when he's walking in righteousness? Or keeping the laws? The statutes? Come on, on out of here. Go ahead. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, 
But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So there you go. You got to be spiritual, man, to get this life and peace. Because right now, this confusion only brings forth death. Not death to me, but death to those who are coming to this truth and being, you know, being ostracized because of your false doctrine, your false information, you know. So you're going to discourage the children of Israel that are coming into on, onto this platform and who are coming into this truth. You know, you're going to discourage them and that's going to be on you. Their blood is going to be on your hand. That's right. All right. Keep reading. Verse 7, because the carnal minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now, that, that's saying a lot right there. It's saying your carnal mind is an enemy to God. And we just now read about how we don't judge against the outer appearance. If you be Christ and we be Christ, right? If we be in the anointed, if, if we're the children of Israel, okay, and we're in this hidden land, we are the hidden ones, and we read Deuteronomy 28, 49, that, you know, he's going to send a nation against us from far, from the end of the earth, whose tongue we don't understand. Now, these are all scriptures, and if you can't accept that, you can't even accept God. You don't even have the spirit of God. Now, I hear you're, 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 you're dumb saying, well, the Most High ain't dealing with you. What are you talking about the Most High ain't dealing with you? You know? That don't make no sense to a, to a spiritual-minded person because we know the Most High deals with us on a daily basis. Because we repent. We, we, we come out from our wicked ways. We walk the truth. You know, we bring forth His light. You know? So how He's not dealing with us? That's right. And you with this false doctrine, and he's dealing with you? No, he's not dealing with you. That's that's Bloomy Box dealing with you. That's your God. That's your father. That's the, the father tares. of lies. That's the tares. That's right. Now uh, verse nine. Verse nine. So so when they so when they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is, is life because of righteousness. Because of what? Because of righteousness. That's how you judge a person. Yep. You judge him according to his righteousness. Not according to his genotype. Not according to his phenotype. Find out in the scriptures. <laughs> Psalms 119.89 O oh Lord, thy word is settled forever in heaven. Find that in the scripture, man. We, we can find ourselves in the scriptures, man. So all my brothers out there, you Israelites from the, from the ten tribes, I give you a plot. Keep walking in this truth. Keep bringing forth this truth. Keep talking to your brothers and your sisters. Lift them up. Raise them up. Bring forth this doctrine and throw all that stuff out the window, man. Now, this, man, and I'm we're talking to a Pacific group out there. You now, and, and, and yeah, I want to get in the flesh, man. Because of this fool, what he said about my wife and about my kid and how he how he dis disgraced my wife and my kid on his on his whatever platform, you know? If I knew that fool, yes, I would have gotten the flesh instantly. But guess what? The Most High had put a spirit upon me not to do so. That's right. You know, he said, no, my, 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 use my word. Use my word. Go after my lost sheep. And those lost sheep right there, you know, let them get caught by wolves, you know, because we don't know what kind of a man of the spirit that we have. You know, we're supposed to bring forth and bring this light. You know, we're, we're, we're set here to do the Most High's will. Now, if if they are if these people doing the Most High's will, so be it. Who can fight against it, right? Not me. But guess what? The Most High put a spirit on me and my brother to do this. So guess what? The Most High ain't putting that spirit in them. That's right. All right. So raise up, Israel. All praises. All praises. All praises to the Most High, man. This is one nation, one power, 
One nation, one power. The children of Israel, the 12 tribes, one power, that's a higher in the name of Yeshua. So we're here to do this video. I pray that uh, the information we brought forth, you know, will be meat unto you. Shalom. Shalom.